Howdy gamers, Indiana John here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 11 games of all time. Now, I just started this video channel, Game On Video Reviews, and so for those of you who might not know me very well, I thought it might be a good idea for me to do a countdown of my top games so that you can get an idea for sort of what kind of games that I like and what my tastes are in gaming. And uh, that way, as we, I do reviews going forward, then you can sort of decide whether you know my tastes line up with yours and might be helpful to you. There are a lot of video reviewers out there who do top lists. Um, many of them do a top 100 lists. Many of them do those once a year, which seems to me to be a little bit overkill, but you know, I watch them sometimes. I think they're kind of interesting, but I just don't think that I could do a hundred games and rank them in any sort of meaningful order. So, um, and I also don't want to sort of dilute what I'm telling you guys. I really want to give you the top games, the ones that are the absolute top cream of the crop that I really enjoy the most. And so that's why uh, we're not going to do a top 100. I'm just going to give you the top 11, not a top 10, because here at Game On Video Reviews, we like to give you a little bit more, you know, at least 10% more. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, roll some cutesy animation and get started. My number 11 game is a worker placement game, and it's one that I had the opportunity to play for the first time in 2015, so it's new to my list. And that is Legacy, The Testament of Duke de Crissy by Michael Hendricks and Portal Games. This is a worker placement game where you are building a family. It's got a very interesting theme to it and, and one that I haven't seen in any other game. You are getting married and having children and then arranging marriages for your children so that uh, you can have the best social position and the most money and the most uh, victory points, of course, is the, the way to win here. But um, I've never pl had a, played a game where you use a worker to go and visit a fertility doctor or go and uh, to claim a title or something like that. So there's a lot of real interesting and different things going on here. Um, I've just never seen anything like it, and so it's a whole lot of fun. I, I, I like worker placement games quite a bit, and I just love this one because it's just a theme that um, I've just never seen before. So it's it's uh, it's cool to find something that's unique. My nine-year-old daughter loves this game because she just lo doesn't care about the points, but she just loves to see people fall in love and get married and have children. So it's fun for me to play this with her. She really likes it. So my number 11 game of all time, Legacy. My number 10 game is one of the heaviest games in my collection, and that, I mean like physically heavy, and that is Caverna, The Cave Farmers, uh, designed by Uwe Rosenberg. And uh, this is a game that is a follow-up to Agricola, one of uh, Uwe Rosenberg's masterpieces, if you will. And uh, this is a much more streamlined version of that game, I think. It, it takes a lot of the things that I didn't like about Agricola, um, where you were responsible for uh, doing a little bit of everything in that game, and you got punished if you didn't do some of every possible action that you could do, you know, farming and, and raising animals and things like that. Caverna allows you to be a lot more directed and focused in uh, what you do with your uh, actions and what you do with your board. So if you want to raise a whole bunch of donkeys and have that be your thing, then you can totally do that, and it's not going to penalize you a as much as it would in Agricola. Um, so I think that it's very, it's a lot more forgiving, and uh, you know, if there's anything I could say about games that I like, is I like games that are forgiving, because I just, I have a pretty good mind for strategy, but I'm, I'm not as good as most of the people in my game group, and so I hate games that just punish you for making bad decisions. I know that sounds terrible, but it's really true is that I, I feel like if I make a bad decision in a game, I don't want to be stuck sitting for the next three hours suffering for it. So um, I think Caverna is a good game, uh, a good example of a game where if you make a couple of mistakes or you don't optimize things perfectly, you might still do okay. And so there's a lot of good options to, in this game. And I think it's really a lot of fun and it's super heavy, but that's Caverna, my number 10. <laughs> My number nine game is currently out of print, and so that's why I'm really glad that I have it in my collection. And that is Colosseum from Days of Wonder, uh, designed by Wolfgang Kramer and Marcus Lubke. Uh, this is a resource management game where you play the owner of a, a Colosseum in ancient Rome, and you're pretty much like a show manager where you're trying to get together the actors and musicians and animals and fighters and gladiators and things that you need to put on the greatest shows. And so every turn you're going to have some a show to choose from uh, where you can buy shows and, and then you're going to put all the things together that you need then you're going to put those shows on and try to get the most fans and uh, that's how you get points in the game. So it's really a lot of fun. Uh, it's cool to upgrade your Coliseum and to you know put things like the 
the uh, the Emperor's Loge on there, and you can put like season tickets into your a Coliseum. And then there's even an element where you're rolling some dice to try to attract these pawns that are your um, your senators and the the high government officials in Rome that you want to come in and see your show. So uh, the game is super awesome, and I uh, I really hope that it comes back into print so that more people get a chance to play it. But I'm glad that I've held on to it, and I I play this uh, pretty often. I usually get this out several times a year because uh, it's always a good time. Uh, in my group, we love the Race of Janus, so that's a shout out to my buddy Greg. Race of Janus is the way to go. <laughs> my number nine game is Colosseum. My number eight game is also a game that is woefully out of print and probably will never come back into print, and that is Heroescape. Um, this is the Swarm of the Morrow uh, starter set, but uh, really this doesn't do justice to what I have It's in my collection. I have just buckets full of this cool plastic terrain, uh, and then I have this big thing here which has got all of my figures in it, which is just, just piles and piles of these, of these plastic figures. And this is everything from, you know, uh, zombies to robot dogs to superheroes to, um, I got some dragons in here and more robots. It's just a whole pile of different uh, genres of creatures and these cool miniatures that you uh, put boards together and you battle them out. It's a light uh, miniatures war game, uh, but it's a whole lot of fun. I really love the clashing of all the, the themes together. A lot of people don't like that about Hero Escape that it's, oh, it's all these themes that don't make any sense together, but I think that's what makes it super fun because you know, who wouldn't want to have uh, the Incredible Hulk uh, fighting Doctor Doom and this giant, you know, a troll thing? You know, I think that's super cool. So, uh, so it's, it's again, I'm glad that I collected a whole bunch of it back in the 2000s. Uh, it's really not in print so much anymore. Uh, the closest that they've done is that the, um, the Magic the Gathering uh, people, uh, Wizards of the Coast, they have put out the, uh, like a sort of a Magic the Gathering board game that has some Hero Escape like elements to it. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of a feel for it. But uh, for my money, if you can get on like eBay, and get some old Hero Escape stuff, it's really worth it because it's just a, a total blast. It's just a dice chucking pile of fun. So that is my number eight game, Hero Escape. I first played my number seven game at an Extra Life charity event at a game store in New Hampshire with some buddies of mine. And it was one that we pulled off the shelf really late at night and didn't really know a whole lot about it. Uh, ended up playing it and having a super great time and it ended up being in my top 11. And that is Lords of Vegas, uh, designed by Mike Selinker and James Ernest. And uh, this is a game about building casinos in Las Vegas, um, in the heyday of Las Vegas, I guess if you will, and uh, using dice to put into those casinos that will represent your stake in the casino. And whoever has the highest value of die is the boss of that casino, and they're the ones that are gonna get points when that casino pays out. So there's uh, mechanics in the game where you can actually um, pay money to reorganize the casino and re-roll all those dice. And for my, my friends and I, this has been the originating game of the what we call the stand-up dice roll, where just about every game there's some sort of tension-filled moment where uh, a big deal is cut and a, a casino gets reorganized and everybody stands up and chucks those dice and you don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes there's re-rolls and it's just a hooting and hollering great time. <laughs> and um, you can there's a lot of gambling involved in the game. Well, not a whole lot of gambling, so it's not primarily a gambling game but there's some luck involved and so you really feel like it's Vegas because you you have money so you feel like you got some control over things but then a lot of times it just comes down to to how those bones roll so anyway this is a super great amount of fun uh, don't let the terrible box cover art um, uh, fool you but uh, this is number seven on my list of all-time favorite games Lords of Vegas so here we are at number six on my top 11 of all time, and that is a game by Stefan Feld, which is the Castles of Burgundy. Now Stefan Feld is a designer that has taken the uh, whole industry by storm in the last few years and has put out a whole lot of fantastic games. I am definitely a Feld fanatic, and I love almost everything that he's designed. There's really only a couple of them that I, I don't really like. I didn't really like Rialto very much, and I, I couldn't quite figure out Macau, but, but most of his other games I think are just fantastic, and Castles of Burgundy is, uh, of course, number six on my, my list of all time, and uh, I think one of his very best. Um, this is a game where you're taking tiles off of a center board and putting them onto your kingdom. It's very Euro, <laughs> and you're, uh, the way that those tiles interact with one another is going to score you points, uh, and whoever has the most points is the winner. But the thing about this game that I like the most is the fact that it's very simple, 
um, couple of actions that you can take every turn. You roll two dice, and those dice are going to determine which actions that you can take. And I love that in general about games where you have a lot of options open to you, but then you have some sort of central mechanic that limits what you can do on your turn. So there's a million different ways to get points in Castles of Burgundy, but when you roll those dice, you're only going to get to do a couple of things on your turn. And so uh, for me, again, someone who's not great at games sometimes, it's good for me to limit my options and not have to think about a million things. Just on this turn, I can be a little bit tactical and I can think about the one or two things that my dice will do for me. And I really like that about Castles of Burgundy. So it's a fantastic game. I think it's a really good one. So sort of a next step to introduce to gamers who have already gotten their toe into the water of gaming um, because it's got sort of that simple uh, turn by turn mechanic to it. But one of the best Feld games, definitely give it a try. My number six of all time, Castles of Burgundy. Well, we made it to the top five, and my number five game is my top-rated worker placement game, and that is Lords of Waterdeep from uh, Wizards of the Coast. This is a game that came totally by surprise in a, in a world in a world where uh, Wizards of the Coast makes Magic the Gathering cards and little else. Um, they decided to put out this game that was a tightly made Euro game that had great mechanics to it and was a really solid worker placement game. It just sort of came out of nowhere. And I love it. And it's uh, it's so easy to teach. Um, I think for all the criticism that Lords of the Waterdeep gets for it not being thematic, I think that's garbage. I think it's a very thematic game. I think it makes sense to me to put together those adventuring parties and go on, go on quests to get points. Um, so, you know, it's just as thematic as most games that are of, of this type. So uh, I think it's fantastic. And, um, and I'm going to also say that this game makes my top five only when it's at the, you add the um, skulls, uh, Scoundrels of Skullport expansion to it. By itself, it's a fantastic game, but when you add in this element of corruption and some, some of the additional things uh, that, the, that come in with this expansion, the Underdark board and that kind of stuff, I think this just makes it just amazing. So it's, it's definitely by far my favorite worker placement game. There's been a couple others recently that sort of crept up. Uh, Champions of Midgard's kind of knocking on the door there because I really do like that game too. But I just think for a, a, a pure worker placement experience that plays uh, quickly, always nice, tight, tense games. Uh, you can't go wrong with Lords of Waterdeep, my number five. My number four game is the only exclusively two-player game on my list, and that is 1960, The Making of the President, designed by Jason Matthews and Christian Leonard. Now, this game and the mechanics of this game have in some ways been supplanted by what is now the number one, two, three, top, one of the top three board games on Board Game Geek, Twilight Struggle. It has a very similar card-driven mechanic to it, but for me, one thing you have to know about me is that in addition to games, I am also a huge fan of United States presidential trivia. Ever since I was a kid, I've always loved the presidents and all the details that go along with them. I think that the presidents really helped to capture the history of America because you know you can always say what you know whatever happened in American history. Well, who was the president at that time? And just always been fascinating to me. So this is a great game that recreates the 1960 presidential election between Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy, and it puts you in the driver's seat. So where you know Nixon could actually win this thing, <laughs> and I think it's just really really great. I think that the mechanics may not be quite as tight and elegant as Twilight Struggle, but I think that just the theme of this one just, just makes it for me because it just makes a lot more sense that you're jockeying for position in different states to be able to get those electoral votes to win the election. So much history on the cards uh, that's you know real history that, 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 that is, is recent history too. It's not like you're talking about the Napoleonic Wars or something. This is something that happened in the last 50 or 60 years. So uh, I think it's a fantastic one. Again, it's an out of pr a print game, uh, much like a couple of others on my list. So sorry about that. But uh, if you're ever able to get your, uh, a chance to play this, or get your uh, hands on a copy of it. My number four game, a fantastic one, 1960, The Making of the President. My number three favorite game of all time is my favorite Stefan Feld game of all time, and that is Trajan. Uh, now this game is, uh, I guess kind of a surprise to be on my list because I usually do like there to be some sort of a link between theme and mechanics. And I, I got to agree with the folks that say that this game really has no theme. There's a lot of pretty artwork that has to do with uh, Roman things, but what you're doing in this game is collecting stuff and getting combinations of things and all the, and going along on different tracks and just all the things that you do in a Stefan Feld point salad game. And yet I love it so much and I have such a great time playing it. It's such a puzzle for me to try 
try to figure out what's the best path to victory. And I definitely haven't figured it out yet, but every play of this is extremely enjoyable. And I think this is the quintessential Stefan Feld game. And I think if uh, it really is his crowning achievement uh, as a designer. So I mean, he's got more games to design in the future, I'm sure. Um, and so that, but at this point, I really think the Trajan is the one. So uh, I really, really love this game. I would definitely uh, recommend checking it out. My number three game of all time, Trajan. Well, we've reached the silver medalist, the number two game in my top 11 games of all time, and it is a big space exploration 4X game, and that is Eclipse, designed by Toko Takakalio. My apologies if I mispronounce your name, sir. But Eclipse New Dawn for the Galaxy is a big 4X space game uh, that also has a Euro-style Euro resource management game hidden right in the middle of the box. So that's one of the things that I love about it the most is that you have spaceships, plastic spaceships, you've got uh, upgrades parts to those ships, you've got dice rolling combat, you've got exploration, and then also you've got resource management where you're trying to manage three resources, income and science and materials to make sure that you have what you need to be able to do all those things. And so I just think it's a full and complete experience. I, it's a long game, it's a heavy game, but I've taught this game in conventions because I like it so much and I want to introduce it to other people. Um, and I, I play it every chance that I can get. I think it's just a fantastic design and just kind of came out of nowhere. And, and and people were talking about it. It was, it was a lot of buzz on, on Board Game Geek when this first came out. And when I got my hands on it and got a chance to play it, it lived up to the hype. Um, I absolutely love this game. And it's my number two of all time, Eclipse. Well, we've arrived at the gold medalist position, the number one game of all time for me. And there should be no surprise if you watch any of my other videos because it usually holds a place of honor right behind my head here. And that is Through the Ages, A Story of Civilization by Vlada Shvatel. This is actually the uh, new version, the Through the Ages, A New Story of Civilization, which has some slightly different artwork and rules to it, but it's basically the same game. And um, I gotta say that I just think that this is a pinnacle of game design. I just think that the mechanics are just near perfection and, and the way everything works together is just fantastic. It is an extremely long game. Um, it, is a, it is a dense game. It's a game that's kind of hard to learn and it's a game that's extremely hard to master. And so therefore there's really no reason whatsoever why this should be at the top of my list. Because I'm, I'm usually wanting to pick up games that are easy to learn, easy to teach and, and get to the table right away. But this is a game that has so been worth my investment of time. I've played this in, in face to face probably t uh, maybe 10 times I've played it online through uh, boardgaming-online.com uh, probably about 30 times and every play of the game you know you would think it would get repetitive but it doesn't um, as you learn more and more about the strategy of the game you can sort of carve out the intricacies of what you want to do to build your civilization um, and to manage your resources there's just so many things you have to manage at once um, and yet it's a uh, uh, it, it's just a rich, rich experience. I can't say enough good things about it. So um, it, it's, it's, it may seem like a not very accessible game because of the length to it, uh, but there's a reason why it's one of the top games on Board Game Geek and has been for years and years. And uh, that's because it's just one of the best design games, I think, ever. <laughs> and so I'd highly recommend that you check it out. This one's the gold medal. I'm so privileged that uh, Vlada actually signed my copy of the game uh, when my buddy went over to Essen and got it for me. So this is one of my prized possessions now in gaming. Uh, this is absolutely the number one game for me through the ages. Whew. Well, there you have it, my top 11 games of all time. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully there, you found some games in there that maybe you might want to try out based upon my recommendation or maybe some that you completely want to avoid. That's good too. Uh, but go ahead and let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, give me a like and definitely appreciate it if you click subscribe so you can check out all the other videos I have on the Game On Video Review channel. But until next time, game on.